This video is for all the young people out there who are struggling with mental health issues. When I was younger, I wished that I had somebody like myself who is sitting here on a video talking about their mental health issues. And that is exactly what I try to do on my YouTube channel. And trying to remain strong, I know it's good if I'm wrong, I got it. I wish there was someone who was telling me that what I was experiencing was normal and it was not weird or strange or anything wrong with me. I wish I had someone to tell me that what I was going through was normal, that it wasn't my fault and that I wasn't to blame. I'm here to tell you that it's okay not to be okay and that you're not alone. I'm here to let you know that there are ways to cope with your mental health, ways that you can get support. It's all about finding the right strategies for you. First, let's start with a few facts. Mental health conditions are mainly 50-50. So what I mean by that is 50% of it is usually down to your genetics and 50% of it is usually down to environmental factors such as bullying, such as trauma, such as any environmental thing that can trigger a mental health episode. I myself believe that mine was mainly environmental so I went through a lot of trauma in my life and because of that I feel that a lot of it was environmental. I, I don't really have an extensive family history of mental health problems so for that reason as I said I think mine was ma mainly environmental. If you would like to hear more about my mental health stories I will leave some ones in the description box down below. Mental health conditions can be hard to manage and it's no secret that I've struggled. I've struggled for over eight years of my life but I'm here to tell you that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and there is a way through it. There is a way to cope and to manage and to recover. Sitting here at three years into my mental health recovery I'm able to finally say that I love recovery and the way it looks on me. For somebody who is struggling right now, I I would say that it's hard because in the moment you don't want to recover and in the moment you feel so intensely rubbish about yourself and in the moment you just think, well, this is going to be my life for the rest of eternity, but it's not. I struggled, as I said, for over eight years and I'm now able to sit here and say I'm in recovery and recovery looks amazing on me. I love it when I sort of I'm sitting here and I'm able to make videos for you all because this is something that I never thought I would experience and I never thought I'd be able to say I went through everything I went through and now I'm able to help others. But there was once a day when I didn't think I'd make it to my 21st birthday. Then I didn't think I'd make it to my 25th. And now sitting here at nearly 28 years old, being like, I'm excited for what the future holds. It is amazing to think that. But as I say, it doesn't mean it's easy. I was in and out of hospital for over eight years of my life. I was admitted under sections in the UK. A mental health section means that you don't have the capacity to make some or all of the decisions. And I was sectioned for my own well-being. So I understand what it's like to be at rock bottom. But it is possible to come out of rock bottom and it is possible to become a recovered version of yourself. I've seen numerous doctors, nurses and health professionals and some of which that have touched my life deeply and have affected the way that I am today and have affected the actions and the steps that I have taken. But it is no secret that I have met my fair share of doctors that have discriminated against me and that have shown prejudice towards me or the condition that I'm diagnosed with. And I want to just stop there and say that even though I am currently diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, it is my secondary diagnosis, but a lot of the time when people see that on a condition, and I've had a lot of discrimination because of that diagnosis, a lot of people when they see that, they think manipulation, they think trying to get what they want, they they think that, you know, it doesn't, it's not helped by hospital admission. Well, in actual fact, I'm here to tell you that Borderline personality disorder is only as good as the doctor that prescribed it or the doctor that diagnosed it. So I myself was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder pretty much a week after my 18th birthday. It was like a light switch had been switched on and I was able to be diagnosed with this. I was told before my 18th birthday that I was probably going to be diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. And I was given all of the leaflets about it. I never saw 
this eureka moment or this euphoric kind of, oh, this explains me, because it never did. Like, yes, there was some of the criteria that I met, but I always thought, well, that's not me. Like, when they talk about self-harm, they say, oh, it's an emotional response or it's something that it's because you are overwhelmed by your emotions. Yes, I get overwhelmed by emotions and yes, I used to self-harm, but it wasn't for the same reason as other people that I knew that had borderline personality disorder. For me, it was a response to others' judgment or being triggered from my traumatic events. It was nothing to do with, you know, my own overwhelm. It was more the feeling of not being understood and then using self-harm as a way to cope. So it was slightly different in a way. It was, I would talk to many people and I used to have a mentally unwilled Twitter. I used to have an anonymous Twitter that then didn't become anonymous but at the start it was completely anonymous and it was my venting Twitter where I would tweet things that were you know quite depressive really and they would be a vent for me and I met several other people who were diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and they seemed more to fit the criteria better than I did always and as much as I can appreciate you know some people are going to meet more criteria than others and I've actually been told from a therapist via the mental health team that borderline personality disorder is now not being diagnosed until the age of 26 and I said I'm so glad to see that happen because at, at the age of 18 your hormones haven't leveled out. I didn't know who I fully was until I was about 25. So to have a diagnosis that's then an umbrella, a cloud that is being hurled over you, it is so hard to have that over you and to be discriminated for that reason. And I think that if, you know, if I was being diagnosed now, I would not meet the criteria of a borderline personality disorder. And I'm currently trying to challenge my diagnosis, which is harder than you would think. But going back to the whole theme of this, I want to let you know that there is light at the end of the tunnel and you can get through it. You know, I'm here to say that it's not easy. It's not going to be rainbows and sunshines, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There is always a light at the end of the tunnel. The world is better with you in it. Remember that because it is. And I know that on a deeper level than most. Please remember that I believe in you, even if nobody else does. And I shall see you in my next one. Bye. Just like you're young again, no, don't you cry. Just get back up again.